So what we decided to do was change it and just do something completely different. It was a case of focusing on what we could do to help other people. It doesn't need to be massive innovation, sort of complete game changer. It's just the small incremental steps to improving your product or improving your service or improving the way you work. Hello, I'm Steph McGovern and this is Let's Make the New Now brought to you by NatWest. Now, in this episode, we're going to be looking at how businesses have changed their strategy in light of the pandemic. We'll be looking at how CEOs have pivoted their business models in order to get through things and see what results they have had. Now, I'm delighted to say I'm going to be speaking to Jenny Kitchen, who is CEO of design agency YoYo, and Soapsmith founder Samantha Jamieson and her business partner, Ella Mackay. Samantha, can I start with you, first of all? Um, tell us a bit about Soapsmith, how it came about and, and what you guys are doing. You know, Soapsmith is a London-based, handcrafted, luxury bath and body care brand. And we're really known for our signature bespoke scents. And they're all named after different places and locations in London. It's where I was born and bred. And obviously, soap is definitely a big thing. Uh, in lockdown, isn't it? And keeping clean, particularly washing how, our hands and things like that. But but how did it impact you as a business? Well, it was a really, really strange time for us. And lots of people were saying to us, well, you guys are going to be really busy because you guys do soap. And it was a case of, yeah, we are busy, but we're a luxury soap brand. So at the, at the time, people weren't really hankering for expensive luxury soap. So we didn't really want to say, well, we, we make soaps, you know, buy our soaps. It really wasn't the time and the place for that. It was completely unsettling. It was a unknown and a very scary moment. So what we decided to do was change it and just do something completely different and not really focus on soap. It was a case of focusing on what we could do to help other people. So what was that that you did? Firstly, our customers kept on contacting us and saying, you know, what are we doing? What are you going to do? What can we do? You know, you guys do soap. And we thought, well, we'll pivot and we'll produce um, handmade soaps as a gift for the NHS. So what happened was our customers were like, well, what can we do? We're like, OK, if you guys buy any anything, buy a bar of soap, buy anything, we'll donate a bar of soap and we'll give it to the NHS as a thank you, as a as a nice gesture for everything that they were doing, you know? Yeah, and what kind of difference did that make to your business then? I mean, did it work, this strategy? It, it was phenomenal. The response, the press coverage, it was called a Hope in Soap campaign, mm -hmm. and it generated a lot of press. We generated a lot of money. More importantly, so many bars of soap that we ended up gifting all the major hospitals in London as well as smaller ones. It was amazing. Yeah, it's such a nice thing to do as well, like the positive element to this, as well as, you know, trying to keep your business going. It, like, it's just about being nice too, isn't it? Um, Ella, let me chat to you then from the business perspective. This is about making the new now and it's about being agile, isn't it? How important was it to your business to be agile and, and change direction and pivot? We really had to think on our feet and we rebranded and launched last year and we had a very clear focused strategy on retail you know we wanted to win um in our with trade sales with through liberty london and selfridges and bought and mason all these um wonderful high-end retailers then when this happened and stores all started to close and obviously they were in their own difficulties and challenges we had to pivot and think right well how are we going to stabilize drive sales solely through our online business um and the hope and soap campaign really was a genuine um you know philanthropic initiative it was never actually really intended to be anything other than we wanted to do something culturally people have been so wanting to do their bit throughout this pandemic it's really brought communities and culture together yeah. um and it was great that we could be a part of that as well as keeping the business stable and going yeah. through our online I imagine you two, your business, you must have learnt Lord Samantha. Yeah, it was a very, very steep learning curve. But one of the things that I found when we were going through it all was everyone was in the same position. Yeah. You know, so our colleagues, our friends, other businesses, we were all literally starting from scratch. So it wasn't a, 
air thing where it was just us on our own. It was everyone, you know, it was like the whole world, the whole country stopped. So we had to relearn things and look at doing things around. We've worked throughout the pandemic. And, and it, it does sound like, you know, you, you were really agile and that was key. So Ella, what would be your top tips for businesses, particularly those in e-commerce? Well, I think, um, I, I mean, one really important thing, I suppose, is that you're, if you're selling online, you need to have a really simple site to use. So you need to make it very easy for people to um, to use, to shop it, because even though e-commerce has become huge and lots of people choose to shop online now, the difference between a site that works and is easy and feels as you know simple as going to the shop and picking something up is, is really important. And then also obviously letting people know that you're there online. So you know, you, we um, used our social channels in a massive way. I mean, we've always used social because we're a very visual brand. So it was always a wonderful way to, to tell our story. But more than ever, um, that was really important. Can I ask you a bit about then, um, Ella, how this then fits into your long term strategy? Like, have the changes you made been ones that you're going to keep in the business now? Or will you be pivoting again soon? Oh, I don't know if I've got the energy for a, quite such a dramatic pivot again. <laughs> Fair cool. enough. But, um, you know, like you say, we, we've learned loads. Um, I think our online business was always there in a presence, but it wasn't our focus. But we've proven that actually people are buying online, people respond online, um, and, you know, it will become a really fundamental part of, of how we um, we sell our product yeah so d i know you were saying like you might not have the energy to pivot again but i imagine you probably feel more prepared now do you if you did need to do that like what what would you say the things are you've learned about being prepared for a pivot and a, a need to adapt to your business and change yeah I, I think just always being open to um new ideas not being scared to take risks i think is important for example our pre-covid plan was to launch a product in september um, but we decided that to pull that launch forward to give our customers some new news and that product was um a bath soap and we launched those in may which doesn't seem like the right time to to launch a bath soap because people aren't necessarily having baths as you would move into summer but my god the response was amazing and you know that meant spending money that meant investing in making sure that we had the infrastructure in place to do that so it was a big risk for us but it paid off and prepared to pivot i think it's also don't think about it for too long you know just just do because yeah. otherwise you lose the moment I mean, you guys, Element Samantha, are so positive about how you've approached this. But I mean, there must have been tough times. Did you have any challenges, Ella? Absolutely. I mean, all businesses do. And we had challenges before COVID and we'll have them post COVID. Um, but I think one of the things is that we didn't really expect the response that we had online. Um, and because it was a smaller part of our business, you know, we're a small team and the, the kind of from a production side of things, we weren't necessarily geared up to be delivering, you know, super, super high volumes of, of orders. Um, so we've, we definitely had to, we've had to do a lot of rethinking about processes. And, and like I said, because we are a small business, there's a lot more kind of get stuck in and process isn't a word that we love to use because we, we're creative and we're nimble and we like to be um, more free flowing, if you like. But there is also, um, much to Sam's disappointment, a role for process. <laughs> and, um, you know, and we had to really quickly start to put those things in place so that we would never compromise on an order going out or an order being packed properly or someone making sure everybody got, gets the right product, making sure that people get their order in a, in a short amount of time. You know, they're not waiting for a long time to, to receive it. So... Those sorts of things were definitely a challenge because we weren't prepared. And then the other thing was um, at the very beginning, having to think about, you know, your, your initial reaction when you're staring down the line of losing lots of business, i.e. in our case for retail, is to make cuts. You know, where can we pull back on our expenditure to ensure we preserve cash flow, to ensure that we can keep our people and we can keep going and all that kind of stuff. But actually, you've got to be so careful where you make those cuts and think about it a bit more long term. So, you know, we have um, a PR partner who has been amazing throughout this pandemic with us and they've 
they've really helped us propel the business and propel our brand awareness. But actually, it was one of the things that there was a big discussion about is do we need to pull back on that? Because mm. it's a it's a it's a marketing cost. So, you know, and that's where lots of businesses decide to to pull from first. Um, certainly in my experience. So so um that was also you know, quite challenging yeah. to just to make sure that we were making the right decisions. Yeah. Uh, Samantha, did anything go wrong? Lots of things went wrong. <laughs> I was saying the <laughs> website went wrong. We had so many people on our website at one point. It crashed. And um, we, it, it was crazy because we were getting all these orders. And we were like, how are we going to, you know, sort this out? And I had people on my Instagram page saying, hey, where's, where's my order? What happened to my order? And I was like, what? And I had, I had emails at like 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning. And it was just trying to sort all of that out. So now we've got a really fantastic website that's smooth. And um, it was something that we had to really get to grips with quickly <laughs> <laughs> you know looking back over the pandemic would you say this is a lot although albeit it's been really tough i understand that has it been an opportunity then for you to actually grow your business more than you might have done if we hadn't have had this crazy time if i if i could have done it the traditional way which was as we were in the flagship shops and then trickling down and building the online i would have chosen that hands down Although we've done okay out of this pandemic, I wouldn't wish this on anyone. And I would much rather have done it the traditional way, really. Yeah. And clearly, you know, you guys are super entrepreneurial, you're agile, you know exactly how to pivot. What would be your tips then for people out there starting out in business? What do you think they need to do and be thinking about? Number one, research. You can never know too much. And number two, prepare for everything. Samantha and Ella, thank you so much. It's been a lovely to chat to you. Thank you so much. It's been great. Thanks so much. So Bye. that's how a sort business managed to pivot in 2020. But what I want to talk about now is what digital design agencies have been doing uh, to pivot through this as well, how they've handled 2020. And with me is uh, Jenny Kitchen, who is CEO of Your Yo. Hello, lovely to chat to you. Now, Jenny, tell me a bit about Your Yo then. What is it you're designing? Sure. Well, we design experiences with impact. So we're a digital agency and a design agency. A lot of the work that we do is websites and uh, and, and apps and other sort of technology products. So we um, have designed and built um, uh, voice applications, um, virtual reality, augmented reality, but using technology and creativity to allow brands to talk to their audiences and get that, build that connection. And as we, we were just hearing about sort of how important branding is, then I guess that's our that's our bag to try and kind of create these experiences. So I'm interested to know then, Jenny, how your business was impacted by the pandemic. Well, I think a few people have sort of said, well, it's digital. So, of course, you know, everybody's moving to digital. So surely you haven't been impacted. But... That's not true. Of course, everyone was impacted because everybody froze. When pandemic hit, most businesses, even those that were doing well, then they froze because the situation was so uncertain. So we did have we did have some clients that were doing kind of were doing well and kind of continued on, but then other clients and they were really suffering. And what do you say when you've got sort of 12 month contracts with people? And brands are saying, you know, we're really suffering. We can't, we can't continue. So, of course, we wanted to, we're going to support our clients. Um, but that did mean that we had a, a sort of a gap and a dip in the revenue coming in. And new business kind of stopped as well. So it was definitely sort of a very uncertain time. We, we'd had a very, very good six months prior to that. Well, two years prior to that, really. So we had that sort of buffer and we had very sort of long term loyal customers. Um, but at the same time, the uncertainty was, yeah, was a challenge. So how did you adapt to that then? Even though it was a terrible situation, then as, a, as an entrepreneur and as a sort of CEO, then I do thrive on chaos and sort of, you know, <laughs> trying to get stuff sorted. So yeah. it was lots of, lots of post-it notes and lots of sort of gathering together of like, what the hell are we going to do? <laughs> um, and how do we help our clients through this? So then we looked at all the different services and what we're offering right now and then seeing, you know, are they still relevant and how can we, how can we adapt those to help to help more people during this time. So one of those was, was e-commerce. We've always done e-commerce, 
um, but typically it's been for, for larger organizations and sort of quite um, sort of long-term projects uh, with, with sort of lots of development work, etc. But we decided to, uh, uh, to offer up Shopify, uh, which is a great e-commerce platform, but it's a much more sort of simple, um, uh, easy to use system. So we, we trained up all of the team and actually that's where furlough came in really, really sort of handy in that sense because we needed to make some of the team furloughed um, due to sort of loss of revenue. But of course they can train during that time and do further development. So, um, so a lot of the team spent the two, three, four weeks that they were furloughed learning these new sort of technologies. So then when we came back, when we were able to bring everyone back, then they were able to hit the ground running. And we've been helping sort of a number of different clients now um, get to market quickly using, uh, using Shopify. And then there was a few other sort of services around, um, around actually, you know, people may not be investing, brands may not be investing in, in website projects right now. Um, some are, of course, but, but many are sort of looking at, well, using our existing eco structure and sort of framework how can we make that better as opposed to how can we rebuild from scratch over the next 18 months most companies don't have 18 months you know they want to be um making a difference now so we were focused much more on our services of how to optimize existing um existing sort of digital sort of infrastructure and things um, and that's kind of, that's, we've seen great results and things with that. So thankfully everyone's back from furlough now and, uh, and we haven't lost anyone and business is now kind of, uh, really, um, in a really good position. Yeah. So it, it sounds like, again, you know, you, you've taken the, the challenges that were thrown at you, managed to pivot and then make the new now. And that now probably looks quite different to what you originally had planned for the business. I mean, we're, we're still we're still offering the same services. I guess we're just offering sort of slightly slightly different ones to sort of uh, to um, to help more 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 customers. So I think the business is the business is largely largely similar. Um, we have we have looked at the individuals within the business, and because we went into this thinking we do not want to lose anyone. So it's kind of looking at our existing team and saying, well, actually, can we retrain? Can we move people around? How do we make sure that we're all kind of, we're all in this together and we're all safe? And so really we just, uh, the business hasn't changed a huge amount. Um, I think kind of, especially Shopify and some of the technologies that we're using right now, then it might have taken a year or two years to sort of train up the team. Whereas pandemic times, it's taken three months. Yeah. <laughs> it's taken two months. <laughs> So I think, and I've heard this story quite a lot from other from other people of just you know things that would normally take two years have just happened in weeks yeah. because of necessity. I like that movement. I like that fast paced nature of it. Yeah, it, it sounds like you're a bit of an adrenaline junkie, to be honest with you, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> it does, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. What about then? What would you say to businesses out there who are, uh, are kind of looking for hope in all of this? What what, what would be your top tips? So my top tips are that um, even though even though audience sort of um, behavior, customer behavior has, has changed quite a lot in the last few months, then we are creatures of habit. And I think we will we will find, we will go back to some of the sort of um, some of the behaviors that we exhibited before and we will continue to buy and shop and it will just be a, a, adapting to new kind of new ways of doing things. And so I guess the kind of there is a lot of there is a lot of positivity and hope in the economy, and I think we should we should remember that positivity positivity and optimism is so key for any business owner. I think sort of for any uh, other tips, look after yourself. Mental health and me mental well being is so important, and I think especially sort of especially through this time, I've seen a lot of people crumble, a lot of people go through sort of difficult times, including myself. And as a, as a business owner, especially, then your job is, one of your jobs is to cheerlead and to coach people sort of uh, to, to get the best out of your team. And if you're not looking after yourself, then actually how can you look after everyone else? So it's so important, I think, during this time uh, and beyond is to, is to make sure that um, you as a leader 
are looking after your own mental health. Yeah, God, that's such a, a, an important point, isn't it? Because you're right, you could, you could spend so much time as a business leader just thinking about the welfare of your team and, and you're right, that could mean you could neglect yourself, but it's really important, isn't it, to look after yourself. Uh, I think that's cracking advice on that. Um, what about then what you've learned from perhaps your clients as well? Like, have you got any things to pass on from what, how you've seen the businesses you work with dealing with all of this? I think um, innovation is key. I think it's a word that's banded around so much and it's sort of almost lost its meaning. But for me, innovation is, is, is sort of, is responding to your environment and creating new and novel ways to, to deal with it. And it doesn't need to be massive innovation, sort of complete game changer. It's just the small incremental steps um, to improving your product or improving your service or improving the way you work. Um, and I think it really, it really has shaken things a lot over the last kind of few months. And so I think it's kind of it, this whole idea of continuing to innovate, continuing to improve um, is, is absolutely key. Mm. Adaptability. I think the, the, the clients that we work with that are adapting fast. I think the sort of the whole the whole aspect of sort of some companies are freezing and they're not going out and they're, they're, they're closing down their marketing and they're not being visible right now. Those are the ones that I think will suffer quite a lot in the future yeah. because of the fact that it might be short term benefit now to save on marketing costs and to save on um, sort of uh, sort of spend like that. But again, with with uh, branding and with storytelling and with being you need to be showing up you need to be showing up during this time and so marketing I think yeah is is hugely important so Jenny what's your advice then in terms of like pivoting like what's the best way to do it how do you need to think about it as a business I guess with pivoting I think it's easy for sort of people and I've been in the in lots of um sort of ideation sessions with clients whereby sort of you know all the ideas are sort of coming out which is fantastic but it's, but it's kind of knowing which ones are going to work, which ones are sort of going to land, obviously. And to do that, you do need the right expertise. You know, if you're, if you're selling soap, then it's very difficult to then sort of go into selling combine harvesters. <laughs> it's, it's very, very different. Um, and so it's sort of, it still needs to be within your, within your knowledge base, within your sort of your understanding, I think. But of course, there is a place for risk. So there is a place for sort of trial and error. And I think this whole idea of sort of trial and error is really important around testing. So not kind of put all your eggs into sort of uh, one basket and go to town on it. It's kind of make sure that you've done your research, make sure you've done your audience research, make sure that the product or service is one that will be of value. Um, make sure it's one that is needed and relevant and wanted. Yeah. But then also sort of look at it as um, if you don't have, if you are pivoting sort of just slightly, you know, who can you talk to? Who can advise you on this? Do you know any other sort of businesses and things that are, um, that uh, are doing this? And actually, especially during this time, but I found, I found it in all my career. If you send an email and arrange a call with people <laughs> beforehand, then so many business owners are happy to share their sort of trials and tribulations and it can just cut through sort of weeks and weeks or months and months of sort of failures by having those uh, having those conversations. And did, so did genuinely really nice. And did you do that then? Did you genuinely kind of cold contact people who you wanted to get some help from? Yes, absolutely. We've got a really we've got a really good sort of network. I, I run. Um, I run a female leadership um, sort of group. I, uh, I'm part of many different agency groups um, and all of them have sort of given me sort of different parts of advice and things and some, some offer that service themselves. So we're direct competitors, but it's still, um, I, I don't know, I, I believe in sort of good karma and people helping each other out and yeah. you know, sort of there is enough work for agencies out there for, for everyone. That's cracking advice, that, because I think there'd be a lot of people out there who'd probably be a bit scared about just, you know, as you say, cold emailing or cold calling someone. But I've experienced that as well. I think lots of people are keen to tell you how they've done things, aren't they? If they're not direct comp competition with you, obviously, but uh, 
I think that's really good advice. One other sort of one other, other element to pivoting, it's been a word that's been banded around so much recently. Um, but the reality of running businesses is the fact that you always should be pivoting slightly. You always should be moving the dial because the business, no business is the same 12 months on. The audiences are different kind of different things are going on in the economy, in politics, in sort of all sorts of different things. So you need to be constantly sort of looking at the business and making those incremental improvements and thinking of ways that you can better your service or better your product. And just there, you, you briefly touched on the future 2021 and, and further ahead in the business. What does it look like for you now? Well, we were we were growing before pandemic and we were growing at, um, at a sort of quite a fast rate uh, with the viewpoint to uh, to double in size in the next two years. Wow. And we were on track, we we're on track. And then obviously sort of uh, sort of pandemic hit. Um, we're now building that back up, but um, but for us, then that that hasn't changed. We still want that. Um, we still want that growth. Well, thank you so much for chatting to me, Jenny. It's been lovely to hear about how it's gone, and um, as well to Samantha and Ella there. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for having me. Really enjoyed it. Oh, brilliant. Well, thank you so much. Do make sure you join us for the next episode of Let's Make the New Now, where we'll be looking at the tough conversations that business owners have had to have with their staff and their clients uh, in light of the challenges that 2020 has thrown at them. So join me and NatWest for the next episode. See you then.